Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials. In today's video and vlog post, I would like to talk to you about copywriting. Now, copywriting is not the same as protecting what you write. That's a copyright, R-I-G-H-T, which protects the right to copy. This is copywriting, W-R-I-T-E, or W-R-I-T-I-N-G, writing, copywriting, which is writing copy. And I'm going to tell you in this video, first, what it is, second, why you need it, third, how you can use it, fourth, what the definition of the pieces of it are, and last of all, what you can do with it once you learn how to do it. Here we go. All right, now copywriting is, as I said earlier, writing copy. It has been defined as advertising in print. Now, copywriting was developed in the earlier part of the 20th century, like maybe 100 years ago, when advertising was done primarily in print media mostly newspapers, and then later on magazines, and then flyers and mail-outs. And those of you who have some gray in your hair like I do, probably remember when your mailbox was totally stuffed with all these advertising flyers. There are some people who even made a pretty good penny by teaching people how to turn all these advertising flyers into paper logs for your fireplace and burn it and get heat from it. But be that as it may, today we live in the internet world and a lot of the writing is done online. And you know what? Writing copy for online places is just as important now as it used to be for print media. Let's talk a little bit about exactly what that is. Now, when you write copy, you're basically conveying information to somebody, to anybody, a generic reader, and that information is intended to accomplish a purpose correct? So you are not going to write anything without having a purpose. So when you're doing copywriting, you get a specific purpose in mind. Why am I writing this? What do I want to accomplish? Back in the early part of the 20th century, the people who developed copywriting developed several methods for doing it and doing it really well. And those have been distilled down into several different methods. And one of those methods is one that I believe is among the most popular today, and that is the AIDA method, A-I-D-A. And that, of course, is an acronym. And what it stands for is attention, interest, decision, and action. Now, this AIDA acronym is so popular today that if you go to an artificial intelligence platform, such as ChatGPT, and you ask it to write me a 300-word article about whatever the topic is, and use the AIDA format using the AIDA acronym, ChatGPT knows exactly what you're talking about, and it will write it in that format. Now, let's talk a little bit about what these elements mean and why they are important. The A and AIDA stands for attention. Now, this is the most important part of the entire copy that you are writing. And the reason for that is because today, even more so than in the days of print media, if you don't grab the reader's attention immediately, then they're going to go somewhere else. In the days of newspapers, they would just turn the page and go on to the next page if they were not interested. Today, when you're on the internet, they just click away. And that's one of the biggest banes of internet copywriting is the click away syndrome. So to avoid people clicking away from what you are writing and not reading any of the rest of it, you need to grab their attention. Now, when you do this, what we're talking about is the headline. Now, there's an awful lot of studies out there on the internet. They call it clickbait. This is because they put up many different headlines and they hope that you'll click on their headline. But when you have an article that you're posting, you're going to have a headline, a header for that article. And this is where you have to grab the reader's attention. Now, how are you going to learn to write good headlines? The best way is to study headlines. You study the other attention steps that other writers use. As you read these headlines and you study them, you're putting your own judgment to use, saying, did this grab my attention? Would this headline grab the attention of most of the people I know or most of the group that I know is being targeted by this particular article? 
And as you learn more and more about it, you will get better at it. I took a course in this a couple of decades ago before the internet was popular, and they gave us an assignment to compile a list of at least 300 headlines on 3x5 index cards and rate them as far as how well we thought they would grab people's attention. And, you know, scale 1 to 10 or 1 to 5, whatever it was, but that got us working on looking at all the headlines we could see, copying them down, and the act of actually copying down a headline helps embed it in your mind. And especially if it's a good one, you want to see what did they do and why was it so good and how can I duplicate what they did and make it as good. So step number one is grab the reader's attention with a good headline. If you don't grab the reader's attention, they're going to leave and not read the rest of what you wrote and all this work you put into doing copywriting will be wasted. That is the first A in AIDA. The second letter in AIDA is I, and that stands for interest. And basically, this is the first paragraph of what you write. And if you've ever studied newspaper writing, you have probably heard that you put the most important information up front and then the next most important information and so on and so on. And that's because as people read an article, they'll see the headline, oh, I want to read this, and they read the first paragraph. And then if that interests them, they're going to read the rest of the newspaper article. But frequently they will read that first paragraph and say, eh, I don't like this. And they'll turn the page or go to the next article or whatever. The exact same thing happens with online writing today. So if you are writing something for anybody, for any purpose, and you don't grab their attention, they're not going to read it. If you grab their attention, but then you do not arouse their interest, they will get into it and think, mm, yeah, this isn't what I thought it was going to be, and they will move on. So it's absolutely imperative that after you grab their attention, you must arouse their interest. That's the second letter in the AIDA acronym. The third letter is D, and that stands for making a decision. Now, this is a little bit harder to wrap your mind around, but you have to, at this point, keep in mind what is the entire purpose of this article you're writing, this piece of writing. What is its purpose? For example, we have a club meeting coming up, and I'm sending out this newsletter, and I want to have a header that grabs the club member's attention, and then I want to have a first paragraph that arouses their interest. Now, if the headline is guest speaker to be Lynn Fitch on February 27th, that's a yawner of a headline. Don't you agree? But if the headline were to say, state attorney general wins Supreme Court case, or even better than that, state attorney general wins case in U.S. Supreme Court. Now, whoa, wait a minute. Winning a case in the U.S. Supreme Court is big news. I need to find out what this is all about. And then in the first paragraph, I need to arouse the reader's interest. So they'll read the rest of this newsletter and figure out what's going on here. Uh, the first paragraph might say, uh, Attorney Lynn Fitch, Attorney General for our state, has sued the OSHA, Occupational Health and Safety Administration, 27 times for various infractions on the rights of the state under the 10th Amendment and has won every single one of those lawsuits. Now that arouses my interest. And of course, the next phrase might be, come to the meeting and hear a lot about what she has been doing. The decision I want people to make in this newsletter is to decide to attend the meeting. And of course, the lure that I'm casting out on the water and trying to hook them and reel them in is that we've got this really great guest speaker who's got some good and interesting stuff to share with you. And you need to come hear this guest speaker at this meeting. And so they're reading through this. And my goal in the third section, the third element of this copywriting is to make them decide, yes, I need to attend the meeting. Now, you can apply this exact same logic to whatever it is that you're writing. And then we're going to move on to the last letter in the AIDA acronym, which is the second A. And that means action. On a website, they have 
elements that are a CTA button. And you know what that means? It means a call to action. And this is a very primal element of most every website, any website that is trying to get you to basically buy anything, they will have a call to action on there. And in your newsletter or your writing of any kind of copy, at the very end, you need to tell people what they should do now. For example, in my newsletter saying the Attorney General is going to be our next guest speaker, at the very end I would say, get out your calendar right now and set an alert so that you don't miss this meeting. And that's my call to action to them to take action on the decision they have just made. To summarize very quickly, AIDA, you've got to grab their attention or you may as well not have written the copy. You have to arouse their interest because if you don't do that, they're not going to read any farther. Then you need to get them to make a decision. And that's the whole purpose of this copy that you're writing. And finally, you need to charge them to take some kind of action, even if it's only setting an alert in their calendar. Now, of course, you can use this for salesmanship. You can sell things this way. And many people sell things very well using this formula. But it's applicable in almost anything you write where you have a purpose. Anything other than just informing or entertaining. If you're trying to get people to do something like to come to a meeting, to come to a choir practice, to come to a volunteer session, to show up and pick up litter, anything, you should use the AIDA format. The only thing left to do is to practice. Just like I told you in the beginning, the course that I took had us write down 300 headlines and rate them whether they're good or not. You need to practice yourself. Go read the headlines, write them down, grade them, rate them. Become a good evaluator of headlines, of attention steps. Hey, I read this headline and it said blah, blah, blah. Man, that is a really good headline. I'm going to write that down and see how I can kind of pirate it and use it in my own writing. You need to practice writing the interest paragraphs. How are you going to arouse people's interest? You arouse their interest to make them continue reading. They you impel them to want to read the rest of that article. And then you have to practice writing in such a way that you influence them to make a decision in the way you want them to make, to attend the meeting, to come show up and help with this Habitat of Humanity house. And then you need to, of course, have them take action. And that's the last step in this. That's all I've got on this. I hope it has helped several people. It may not help everybody who's watching this, but I'm hoping it will help a lot of people out there. It has helped me over the last several decades make my writing a lot better than it would have otherwise been. Give me a thumbs up if you thought this video was a good one and definitely worth sharing so YouTube will know to recommend it to other people. And if you're a subscriber already, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. If you're not a subscriber, why not go ahead right now, click that subscribe button and then the bell icon so YouTube will notify you when we post another great video right here on David's Tutorials. As always, if you have anything to say, if you want to argue with me, if you want to add something new, if you want to comment on what I've said, leave a comment down in the comment section. I appreciate every comment. And those of you who have left comments may have noticed so far in the life of this channel, I have answered every single primary comment. Sometimes there are replies to comments and I am not always able to answer all the replies to comments, but there's more than 20,000 comments on this channel and I've answered every single one of them. So that's what we've got. And I appreciate everybody. So take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.